Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how to wire an Allen Bradley Micro 820 PLC, both its inputs and outputs. Now this is mainly geared towards our wiring enough to get started exercise of our PLC trainer, but the principles are the same for any PLC. We're going to be using our wiring enough to get started guide and we're going to go through it step by step to make sure we understand why we're making which connections we are to which terminals because I get calls a lot from people that are like, hey, it's my first time wiring a PLC. I connected a button to input zero, but when I press the button, nothing happened. And the reason is you don't have a complete circuit from your positive of your power supply through your input and to back to the negative. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a video on syncing and sourcing. Now this is gonna be really important for helping you understand how to wire your PLC because it'll help you determine whether your inputs and outputs are syncing or sourcing. And the case of our Micro 820, its inputs are syncing and its outputs are sourcing. So what that means is our switch is gonna be up here. So I'll just crudely draw a switch there. And that means our PLC input is gonna be down here. So the big thing that you have to have to make this input turn on is really this circuit needs to have current flow. And I like using the term current flow instead of people saying we have to have voltage. Because if we say that we have to have current flow, it says that our power supply is good. It says we have a continuous path from our power supply to our switch. And then from the other side of our switch, we have a continuous path to our PLC input. And most importantly and most overlooked when you're starting out is we have a continuous path from the other side, which is usually called the PLC common, back to the negative of our power supply. So let's work through this on this first one. And right here, we have button one. In fact, we have all of these switches and buttons all jumpered together, and they're gonna go to the plus of our power supply. But let's just concentrate on button one right now, just so we can have it really simple. We're gonna take a wire from the top of our green contact of button one, and we're gonna take it to the plus of our power supply. So remember on these contacts, you have a green and you have a red. The green's gonna be normally open, which says right there, NO. The red are NC or normally closed. So we're gonna go from the top contact and we're gonna to go to the positive of our power supply. Now on our trainers, the left-hand terminal blocks are the positive and the right-hand ones are the negative. Now this is 120 volt powered from here that plugs into your wall outlet and then it goes through this power supply to make 24 volt DC. So we're gonna connect that to our positive. The other side of that green contact goes to input four on our PLC. So we're gonna take a wire from the bottom of that green contact and connect it to input four. Now it's a little difficult to see there, but here are the top contacts. So we are connecting to input four, which is right there. It says I-04. Now here's where a lot of people say, hey, I'm done, let's try it out. But remember, we have to have a continuous path from the plus of our power supply through our PLC input and then back to the minus of our power supply. And in this case, the minus of our power supply is going to be this COM0 right here. And actually, before we do that, let me try this out just to show you what does happen, what I see a lot of people do. So I have power on it now. Make sure you can see that. We'll wedge that in there. Right now we have 24 volts. Now if I go to the top of button one, I also have 24 volt. And if I go to the bottom of it and I press the button, then we have 24 volt at the bottom of our button. We also have 24 volt down here on our input. But as we press the button, there is no input. And that is because on our simple diagram here, we have power from our plus terminal going around to our switch, coming around to our input, but we haven't done this final little piece going back to the minus for our power supply. And this probably is the number one thing I see missing when people contact me saying they can't get their input to work. So now I'll take a wire from the minus of our PLC and connect it to the DC COM, which 
The DC COM is right there. Actually, on this one, it's called COM0. So we will connect it to COM0. Okay, now that we have that common wired, when we press button one, input four is illuminating. You also see output one coming on, and that has to do with the getting started program that's in here. And if you have everything wired correctly, then the lights will illuminate in a certain pattern. We'll go over that when we get to the end of the video. But now what we wanna do is we wanna wire the rest of our buttons up. And so we have a jumper from button one to button two to button three to button four to switch one and then to that plus 24. And so those will go across the top, all of these green terminals because those are normally open. So we're gonna jumper from here to here to here to here to here. That takes care of the wiring from all of these jumpers here. Now you may want to cut these wires, you know, shorter. That's really up to you. I mean, the wire is cheap. You should have plenty of it with your trainer. I don't cut mine because I may put this trainer together and take it back apart 10 times today, depending on what all exercises I'm going over. So next what we want to do is we want to get wires from the other side of those green contacts to their respective inputs. So button two goes to input five. Button three goes to input six. Button four goes to seven. And switch one goes to input eight. Now, one thing to note is we only had one common for all of them, and that is fairly common. Usually they'll be in maybe groups of eight, or they'll be grouped somehow, but rarely will you have one input and one common. Next input, next common. Usually it'll be four inputs, one common, Next eight inputs, one common. And there is some advantage to the commons being broke up and we'll talk about that in a later video. Okay, and when you're done, you should have these connections to your PLC. So we have the COM0 and we have input four, input five, input six, input seven, and input eight. And they are all going to the bottom of these buttons. Now, especially starting out, I'd highly recommend wiring a little bit and then testing out what wiring you've done because it'll be a lot easier to narrow down where the problem is. So we wired button one, we checked it, everything worked. So let's check out the rest of them. We have button two, which should be input five. We have button three, which should be input six. We have button four, which should be input seven. And then we have switch one, that should be input eight. Again, don't worry about this sequencing down here yet. Let's just worry about making sure that those lights come on up here. Also, I don't think I said it. This top row of indicators is your inputs. This bottom row are your outputs. Okay, so all that wiring checks out. And one thing I thought I probably should tell you is we started on our inputs with input four. And the reason for that is these first four inputs, input zero through three, are actually capable of being analog inputs also. So we use the one to wire to our potentiometer in a later exercise, and the other three are available for other analog exercises as well. Now there is an analog output on the Micro H20 also, and it is V0-0, and we go through it on a later exercise. Now let's start wiring our lights which are on this side of our wiring diagram. And going back to our sinking and sourcing video, which hopefully you watched, if not remember, there's a link to it in the description, our PLC outputs that are gonna be powering our lights are sourcing. So that will be our PLC output, and this will be our light. We're gonna need a continuous pass from our positive of our power supply internally in our PLC to the output and then from the output come along to our light. And then most importantly, we'll need that return to the zero right there. So just to show what we're talking about on this one, this PLC has CM zero and then output zero. CM one, output one, CM two, output two, and output three. So we are gonna connect a jumper wire from CM zero to CM one to CM two and take that to the plus of our 24 volt power supply. I'm not sure I was completely clear on what I was saying there. So at this point, you should have a wire from CM0 here, 
and this wire is jumpering right to CM1. And then we have a wire from that one jumpering to CM2. And then this wire is going to the plus of our power supply. So that completes this leg from the plus to our PLC output. So next, let's take a wire from our PLC output and go to one side of our light. Output zero is gonna get a light one. Output one is gonna get a light two. Output two is gonna get a light three. And output three is gonna get a light four. That's a little confusing because they're not lined up one to one, two to two, three to three, but just follow it on the diagram. That takes care of our circuit from positive of our power supply through our PLC output and back to our light. The last thing we're gonna to need to do is connect from the other side of our light to the minus of our power supply. So we're gonna take a jumper wire and we're gonna go from the other side of light one to the other side of light two to the other side of light three to the other side of light four and then back to the minus of our power supply. That completes the wiring of our outputs. And just to recap, we took plus 24 volt to our PLC common, which is mainly that CM0, CM1, and CM2 terminal. And then we took output zero and wired it to one side of light one, output one wired it to one side of light two, output two wired it to one side of light three, and output three and wired it to one side of light four. Then we took the other side of all of those lights, jumpered them together, and connected them to the minus of our power supply. So now we're ready to test that. We'll just turn it around. And with our getting started program in there, when you press button one, if it is wired correctly, the green light will turn on. When you press button two, the yellow light will turn on. When you press button three, the red light will turn on. If you press button four, the blue light will come on. And finally, switching switch one will run it through this sequence of just turning the lights on. Now, if yours doesn't do this, then stop and take a few moments just to trace the wiring out and figure out what it is. Also, don't forget about the sinking and sourcing video that I talked about, but really, these two diagrams right here will tell you everything you need to narrow down the problem. That is how you wire the inputs and outputs to a Micro 820 PLC. Actually, all the Micro 800 PLCs and well, honestly, most, most PLCs, that really covers the basics of wiring them. Please be sure to like and subscribe to this video. It does a lot to keep us going. And I'll put a link in the description where you can check out our line of trainers. Till next time. When you press button three, the red light will turn on. <laughs> And this is what I have to deal with all day, guys. It's hot in here. Hold on, I gotta get my thumbnail pose. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.